Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, at this juncture, we move for the recognition of the Honorable Mary Colmenares for his interpolation of the sponsor of the budget of said office. So move, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Without objection, the gentleman from Bayan Muna, the Honorable Neri Colmenares, is recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Please proceed, Your Honor. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Um, magandang gabi sa distinguished sponsor at sa Office of the President, uh, sa pamilya ng Office of the President. Uh, alam na po naman siguro ng Office of the President na ang aming posisyon dahil ang Office of the President, ang Presidente, ang nag-submit ng budget na ito, uh, willing ang Presidente na sagutin ang mga katanungan hinggil sa budget na ito. And I'm sure the distinguished sponsor, being the chair of the Appropriations Committee, is more than uh, capable of answering questions related to the budget of the President in general. Ang una ko lang pong katanungan, if I may distinguish sponsor, Your Honor, please. Magkano po ba yung savings ng gobyerno natin, yung overall savings, noong 2013 po? Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have not yet finished the... We have not yet finished the year. It's still early to say we have... Uh, we will have savings or surplus or or deficit but uh, as of now i understand uh, we are still on the deficit deficit yes. level that's why we cannot say we have a, a particular savings mr speaker yes uh, i will raise later the dbm circular which uh, impounds savings from various departments not yet spent mid-year. But in any case, I'll just go to the first slide, which is on overall savings. Ang savings po natin noong 2010 ay 46.6 billion. Yung overall savings po natin ng 2011 is 50.5 billion. At noong 2012 po ay 56.5 billion din po. More or less po ba, tama po ba yung ating figures dyan with regards to the savings? I have to check with our figures, Mr. Speaker. Uh, may I know if this was taken from the from an official? Uh, yes, GBM? from the uh, uh, NEP of the President submitted every year, and from the BESF submitted. I, I will check first, uh, Mr. Speaker. May we? Thank you, Your Honor. Session suspended. Session uh, resume. 
Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, we, we confirmed the figures. Uh, these are actually uh, the pooling of savings of unreleased appropriations or withdrawn and obligated allotment from completed or discontinued projects, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat po. Tama po ba yung assumption na pag may overall savings, ang presidente pwede niyang i-realign yung mga savings na yon at i-gastos sa mga iba pang proyekto, iba pang departments, o iba pang budgetary items dahil savings po yon. Tama po ba yung assumption na yon? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. At the end of the year, the Speaker, the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Senate President, the President, and the Chief Justice, they have uh, the authority to use the savings of their respective offices, Mr. Speaker. Can the Speaker of the House realign the budgets, the savings of the executive departments? Mr. For their particular, for the, within, for their particular. Within the department, Mr. Speaker. So the President can realign the savings of the departments, Your Honor. Ngayon po ang tanong ko, hindi po ba napakalaki ng mga savings na yon na pwede palang ma-budget ma ma sana, pero kung titingnan mo, ang regular budget, 674.7 billion noong 2010. Ang savings, 46 billion. 50 billion naman noong uh, 2011. 56 billion naman ng 2012. Matapos po ng deliberasyon ng kongresong ito, matapos natin pagdebatihan sa ang budget item pupunta yan, magkano, anong project, sa ang pupuntang alokasyon, in the end pala, pag mag-savings, bali wala lahat ng pinag-usapan ng kongresong ito dahil pwede palang i-realign ng presidente kung saan saang proyekto ang mga budget na pinag-desisyonan natin on the basis na naging savings po sila. Hindi po ba medyo pag-violate uh, naman yan sa constitutional prerogative ng kongresong ito na mag-allocate ng budget natin under the Constitution? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, to a certain extent, uh, I, I would agree. However, I, I think that is the main reason why in the 2014 budget, the, the reforms is now introduced that the validity of the 2014 budget uh, will be only for one year. It will expire on, in one year. It is a budget as released document because if we look at in the past, for so many years, there are a lot of savings accumulated at the end of the year. And sometimes, I'm not saying this is the usual practice, but sometimes, sinasadya po na magka-savings yung department para magamit nila at the end of the year. That is why, that is why DBM has been encouraging the various departments to spend what they have, to accelerate what they have, to bid out early in the year so that all these funds can be, can be used and to be efficiently used. And I, I agree with this reform. That's why we have to approve this 2014 budget because whatever is itemized in that budget, we should spend at the end of the year. Pag hindi magamit, so Tama babalik po. sa Treasury, Mr. Speaker. Maganda po yung nabanggit ng uh, Your Honor, please, na minsan sinasadya. Actually, sa pagtingin ko po, hindi lang minsan. Talaga po ang sinasubmit ng Presidente palagi sa Kongreso is over and above. Mantakin natin po, 46 billion, 50 billion, 56 billion what is actually needed para at the end of the year, pwede niya talagang i-realign yun sa kahit saan. Kasi hindi naman po pwedeng sabihin sinadya ng department kasi presidente ang nagsasubmit dito. Kung kaya sa pagtingin namin, itong palaki ng palaki ng savings na ito ay isang uh, anomalous na pag-violate ng karapatan ng kongresong ito na mag-allocate ng budget dahil, in the end, only one person will decide saan pupunta yan, anong proyekto pupuntahan yan, at sino ang beneficiaries niyan. Yun po ang reason namin. Kasi kung papansinin nyo, ang savings ng 2011 is 50.5 billion. Pero tingnan po natin ang transfer to. Ano ibig sabihin ng transfer to? 
nirealign mo at binigay mo doon sa ibang ahensya, ibang proyekto, ibang budgetary items, 44 billion. So, ibig sabihin, sa, nag-save ka nga ng 50 billion. So, akala ng ibang tao, ay mabuti, nakasave pala ang gobyerno ng 50. Hindi nila alam na 44 billion pala, ginastos din sa iba't ibang mga items. But this time around, hindi na alam ng Kongreso kung saan ginastos niyan, saan nirealign niyan. Yun po ang isang problema ang hinaharap ng Kongreso ito at yung katulad sa 2012, 56.5 billion ang savings pero 46 billion diyan transfer to. Ibig sabihin binigay sa kung saan-saan na mga ahensya. So, yan po ay isang patunay lang namin na itong practice ng pagbloat ng budget para magkaroon ng savings at the end of the year, para ma-realign ng presidente is a violation in fact of the constitutional mandate of this Congress para i-allocate ang funds at nabaliwala na ang lahat ng deliberasyon natin dito. Uh, Mr. Speaker, hindi naman po sa sinasadya. Uh, there are ceilings, there are limits. That's why the absorptive capacity of a particular agency is taken into consideration. Kung gaano ba talaga siya kabilis magpalabas ng pera. That's why I, can, I, I, I agree to this reform being initiated now by the administration that uh, the validity of the, the budget is only good for uh, one year. Mr. Speaker, that's for 2010. The figures are in fact smaller. If we go back to the previous years, there were years, hindi ko nalang sabihin kung anong taon, 103 billion, 117 billion, 178 billion, 268 billion isang taon panahon po yan ng dating presidente you are referring to but i guess the pero ngayon that... po mr speaker 46 na lang 50 na lang 50. you see that the budget is now efficiently used I... maraming salamat po your honor pero ang ibig ko lang sabihin kung panahon man yan ng dating presidente arroyo ang nirerefer ng office of the president ngayon it doesn't justify the fact na ituloy natin ang sistema ng bloated budgets at may malaking savings. In any case, nabanggit po ang reforms. At naalala ko po yung isang usapan natin dito, ang sabi niyo po, napakaganda ng zero-based budget policy ng gobyerno ng Aquino. In fact, kailangan at isa yan sa reforms na, gagawin, na ginawa ng gobyerno ng Aquino and uh, uh, dapat lang ganun ang ating budget po. No? So, ka, ka, uh, can you please explain To, for the record, Your Honor, bakit tingin nyo napakaganda ng reform na yan yung zero-based budget? Uh, yun po yung unang ginawa kagad uh, pagkaupo po ng uh, new administration sa uh, zero-based uh, budget at saka yung bagong uh, ginawa ngayon, yung performance-informed budget na na-introduce. Ano po ba yung zero-based budget po? Ang pagkakaintindi po, ko po, yung you start at zero, no? Line by line, item by item, you have to justify your uh, your entries, you have to justify yung ipapasok nyo po na, na budget. So, ibig sabihin, zero ang budget ng isang zero, ahensya, yes. i-justify niya ang kanyang needs o yes. pangangailangan hanggang sa umakyat na yung budget niya, at least sigurado natin na yung budget niya is yun talagang kailangan niya. Yun yes. po ang zero-based budget. Yes, Tama po ba yung ganong tipo ng budgeting po? I, I, I agree. Tama po yun. Kasi uh, you will really know kung magkano ang kailangan. Kasi if uh, i-base mo sa history, historical, eh, sometimes uh, hindi na kinakailangan, nandun pa rin yung historical, eh, sinasama lang. Zero-based budget pa rin po ba ngayon ang policy ng gobyerno Aquino? Yes, uh, we are still in the zero-based budgeting. We're in uh, every... We... Na Nagpipresent po lahat ng agencies as TikTok po. Yes, but if you notice, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, marami pong lump sum ang budget na ito. Hindi po ba tama yun? Ang special purpose funds, maraming lump sum dyan. Saan program funds, lump sum. Tapos titingnan po natin yung savings na yan. Yan ba'y isang zero-based budget? Kung talagang bawat need ng ahensya ang binabudgetan lang, dapat eh nagastos po yan at hindi po yan nagiging savings at the end of the year. Pero kung titingnan po natin, maraming lump sum sa budget na ito na in the end, 
hindi siya zero-based budget. Kasi kung zero-based budget siya, hindi kailangan ilamsam. Ang sabi niyo naman po, kanina, kanina Your Honor, itemized po yung zero-based budget, hindi po ba? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. So how do we explain why the Aquino government now is having a lot of lump sums and has abandoned the zero-based budget policy before? Uh, Mr. Speaker, there are particular expenditures na hindi naman po pwede nating ilagay sa isang particular department because there are one or two or three departments are involved. There are many... Uh, I would say broad-based po yung expenditure. Like for example, la uh, calamity fund. Eh, we 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 cannot uh, foresee. You know, kung ilang bagyo darating, we cannot kind uh, of up with that line by line item. Let's say uh, bagyo one, bagyo two, bagyo three. No, so we have to to put this a kind of uh, a lump sum fund, like uh, contingency fund. Hindi natin alam yung contingencies na mangyayare. So nangyan po yan, naka contingency fund, naka lump sum po siya. Ang sabi ng Office of the President during the budget hearing sa komite, ang budgetary support to government corporation is a lump sum amount. Magkano? 46 billion pesos. Ang ALGO is a lump sum amount, 19 billion pesos. Ang Calamity Fund, 7 billion pesos. So hindi lang Calamity Fund. Mabuti kung calamity fund lang. Napakarami. May contingent fund na 1 billion, may debt-ed SBP na 1 billion, may e-government fund na 2.4 billion, may pinch, may, syempre andyan ang PDAF, may feasibility and program fund, lahat. In fact, ang total pa lang ng special purpose funds na inamin ng Office of the President ay 310 billion. Pwede naman siguro nating sabihin may ilang budget dyan sa budget natin na hindi pwedeng uh, itemize, pero hindi naman ganito, na lampas pa sa regular budget natin ang lump sum amounts. Yun lang naman po ang aming punto dito kasi the more lump sums in the budget, the more power of the President to allocate these funds on his own personal discretion at hindi na dahil sa kongresong ito. So in any case, Mr. President, I, Mr. Mr. Uh, Your Honor, please, I would just like to deliver that point. I would like to go to another issue, uh, Mr. Chair. Ang issue ay nabanggit ni Presidente Aquino nung SONA. Ang sabi niya, tataasan na natin ang fare ng MRT. Kasi daw, ang sabi niya, eh, ang laki ng government subsidy dyan. And in fact, ang bigay sa amin ng DOTC uh, balik lang sa previews no ang bigay ng DOTC sabi niya uh, ang sinasubsidize daw ng gobyerno is about 41.5 pesos per passenger so dahil napakalaki ng subsidy ng gobyerno dapat naman pasanin na ng taong bayan ang pamasahe sa MRT so ang tanong po naman namin sa presidente Paano niya nasabi na napakalaki ng subsidy? Ngayon, tingnan po natin yung next slide. Ito po ang eksplenasyon sa amin ng next slide. Ma napakalaki daw... Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Hindi. Uh, balik, balik. Hindi. Uh, balik na. Balik na doon sa last slide. Ang ating... Ang ginagastos daw ng gobyerno is 9,413,866,431. Yan daw ang total na ginagastos ng MRT. Kung kaya, sabi dito sa data ng DOTC, kung i-divide mo yan uh, ng 100... Mr. Speaker, uh, before the uh, gentleman from Bayan Muna can finish uh, his uh, long presentation, May I uh, suggest that uh, since uh, the OTC will be presenting uh, again their budget later because I'm very sure they are more very familiar, or very particular with that particular budget. Although a while ago, earlier, I agree with the statement that the Office of the Pre President has indeed overall supervision. Uh, my good friend, Neri, I, I agree to that. But uh, you know the, the, how the pro budget process is being made, no? Uh, the, the budget is being prepared by the DBCC, Development Budget Coordinating Committee, 
it's uh, composed of the BBM, the DOF, the NEDA, and the Central Bank, and they formulate, they finish the budget, and it's being presented to the President. The President approves and submits the budget to, to Congress. So may, may, may I request my good friend Neri to Congressman Colmenares to present the question to the DOTC later, because uh, I, I really don't have the technical capability to, yes. to, to answer those. Maraming salamat, uh, Congressman Sid. No? Uh, una, nabanggit na namin ito sa OP committee hearing na pag pumunta kayo dito, since you are the one submitting the budget, you should know kung ano ang mga particulars ng departments nyo. No? Pangalawa, lahat ng savings ng mga departments pupunta sa OP, siguro naman may responsibilidad at accountability ang OP sa pag-alam. Parang ang hirap naman na pag-savings pupunta sa presidente, pero yung specific na ginagawa ng department, hindi na alam ng presidente. Thirdly, binanggit ni Presidente Aquino yan sa SONA. So, ibig sabihin, alam niya. Alam niya ang dahilan bakit kailangan tanggalin ang subsidy at bakit kailangan ipasa sa taong bayan ang pagtaas. Kung kaya po, we really expect the office of the President because it was even mentioned in SONA at binanggit niya pa actually yung actual na subsidy. Sabi niya, ito ang sinasubsidize ng gobyerno. Kung kaya dapat nating, uh, dapat nating uh, taasan ang fair. So I would also beg the indulgence of the uh, honor of distinguished sponsor. I'm sure the OP has control over this and the the OTC is uh, is is here. In fact, I would re nakahilera ako sa pagtanong sa the OTC. Pero in order to facilitate para hindi na humabad don, sabi ko nga kanina uh, kay Congressman Biolago na hindi na ako magtanong sa yon para hindi na humaba sa the OTC. So is the distinguished sponsor willing to answer that question? Na it ito naman po galing sa the OTC. Eh. Sabi ng the OTC nine billion pesos ang gastos ng DOTC, ah, ng MRT3. Kung kaya, yan, ganun kalaki ang ating uh, yung expenses dyan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I, I really would want to, to, to answer. However, the figures could be best be validated by the DOTC uh, group, Mr. Speaker. In that case, Mr. Speaker, I will have to go back and reserve my slot again in the DOTC budget. Pero pansinin nyo lang po, kaya daw malaki ang gastos, kaya sinasubsidize ng gobyerno, meron siyang 5.5 billion pesos na BLT payments. Uh, alam po ba ng Office of the President ano ang ibig sabihin Bakit kasama sa gastos natin ang BLT payments na yan na napakalaki? Kasi kung titingnan nyo po yung unang unang part, fair box collection, 2.136 billion pesos. Yun ang kinikita ng MRT sa mga uh, nagsumasakay doon. Tapos may mga non-rail revenue sila, pag i-add mo yan, yung total nakita ng uh, MRT is 2.163 billion Pesos. Ano ang operating expense niya? 1.8 billion pesos. 1.822. So kung titingnan mo, kita ang MRT. 2.163 ang revenue. Ang gastos niya, 1.822 billion. May lamang siya. It's earning. Ang problema, may dinagdag na hindi namin maintindihan, BLT payments na 5 billion. Ang dagdag pa po, may karugtong taxes, duties, and fees na 2 billion. Na parang ang kita pala ng concessionaire, ang, in, ang income tax, kung ano pa mga mga taxes na binabayaran, binabayaran din pala ng gobyerno at ng taong bayan. Kaya lumobo po yung total expenses. So ang sa, tanong namin sa Office of the President at kay Presidente Aquino, tama ba yan? Actually, hindi kailangan isubsidize ng gobyerno ang MRT kasi kumikita kung pagbabatayan mo lang ang operating expense at ang, ang kanyang uh, total revenues. Hindi po ba? Yeah, Your Honor, please. Just the principle lang po. Hindi naman kailangan na 
explain yung data. Ah, di ba ang prinsipyo, kung titingnan nyo lang ang revenue at operating expense, hindi po lugi ang MRT. Doon tayo malulugi pag babayaran na natin yung taxes nila. Babayaran na natin yung BLT payments nila. Kasi ang laki ng lobo eh. 7 billion agad eh. Kaya yung 9 billion na total expense niya, eh, lumobo pala yan dahil doon sa dalawang items. Would a distinguished sponsor as a, just a principal agree na ang total revenue sana kaya niyang gastusan ang operating expense? Your Honor, please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we will take note of these uh, figures. However, we want to be sure. Uh, we, we, we have no way of Thank you. validating right now. I, agree. I hope the gentleman would understand. Yes, no Mr. problem. My, my good friend there is. Thank you. I'll just go to the next slide. Uh, Ah, yung previous slide pala, yan. Ang tanong pa namin dyan sa MRT is this. Pansinin nyo naman po, 28 billion ang total project cost. Magkano ang equity ng kumpanyang concessionaire sa MRT? 7.9 billion. Ano ang ginawa niya? Eh, hindi niya naman kaya palang tustusan ng 28.3 billion. Umutang siya ng 20 billion. So parang sabi namin... Eh kung 7 billion na naman palang kapital, bakit hindi na lang gobyerno natin ang nagkapital niyan? Bakit pa natin binigay sa MRTC? Bakit pa pumayag ang Office of the President na magkaroon ng ganong kontrata? 7 billion lang yung equity niya, niloan niya ang 20 billion at ang 20 billion na yan binabayaran natin ngayon yan. Kung kaya, sabi namin, mabuti sana kung 28 billion ang project cost, Ang equity niya ay eh, mga 22 billion, 25 billion. Pwedeng sabihin ng gobyerno, eh wala tayong kapital eh. Kailangan natin yung MRTC equity kasi kulang ang pera natin. Pero kung ganun lang naman pala na 7.98 billion ang kapital, kayang-kaya po ng gobyerno yan. May overall savings nga tayo, sabi natin palagi eh. Ang nabanggit nga ng distinguished sponsor kanina, tag-236 billion ang savings. Di po ba? Parang hindi maintindihan ng taong bayan, eh, 28 billion na ang project cost, tapos hindi natin kayang gastusan. In any case, you delivered your point naman po, distinguished sponsor, na, na hindi nyo linya talaga yan, so I will just reserve it for the DOTC company. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Oh. Ito pong sa budget ngayon, yan, alam nyo na po ito as the chair. There is a risk management program of 30 billion pesos. Ang sabi po dyan sa risk management program, it is 30 billion pesos. Never po siya nag-exist not in any budget before 2014. This is a new item na hindi namin maintindihan. According to the special provision, this is in order to manage the government's fiscal risk and enhance the country's credibility among potential PPP proponents. So the amount of 30 billion pesos is authorized under Purpose 7. Next slide, please. To cover commitments made by the national government to concession agreements relative to PPP projects subject to pertinent rules. Ang tanong ko po, ito po ba, at ito po yung sagot sa amin ng tinanong, Ito po ay para sa regulatory risks na sinasuffer ng ating mga PPP concessionaires. Tama po ba yan? Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me just uh, focus on the special provision for the risk uh, management program. In order to manage the national government's fiscal risk and enhance the country's credibility among potential public-private partnership proponents, the amount of 30 million pesos is authorized under purpose. Seven shall be used for the government's risk management program to cover commitments made and obligations of the national government in the concession agreements relative to PPP projects subject to the pertinent provisions of rules Loss rules and uh, regulations. So, tama. So, ang banggit po dati, para yan sa regulatory risks. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Tama I po. understand uh, we took this up during the yes. 
debates on the general principles when... Nais po kasi namin sana na bawiin ito ng Office of the President sa budget. Nais po naman kasi ano po ba yan? Ang ibig sabihin ng regulatory risk, gustong magtaas halimbawa ng SLEX at NLEX ng toll rates nila. Ngayon, ititro sila ng Supreme Court dahil unjust ang kanilang pagtaas. Ang sabi dito, sige, na TRO kayo, hindi kayo kumita, di bale, babayaran kayo namin. Doon kukunin ang pondo. Magtataas ang Maynilad at Manila Water ng water rates na hindi na grant ng MWSS dahil unjust ang kanilang pag-impose ng mas mataas na rates. Ano ang sabi ng gobyerno sa program na ito? Don't worry, meron kaming 30 billion pesos na pambayad sa iyo. Hindi po ba napaka-unjust ng provision na yan? Akala ng taong bayan ay salamat, hindi tumaas ang presyo ng kuryente o ng tubig, pero in the end, hindi niya alam siya rin pala ang magbabayad nun through the risk management fund kasi part yan ng kanyang taxes sa gobyerno. Hindi po ba napaka-unjust ng ganong tipong budget at napakalaki pa po ng nilaan nating pondo dyan? Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is just part of the unprogrammed fund and uh, again, as earlier discussed, this cannot be released unless there are uh, there is uh, the, the 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 collections of the